Once upon a time, a girl named Felicity and a boy named Peter bought an abandoned 1830s farmhouse in New York. And this house, you guys, needed new pretty much everything. But the one luxury that we allowed ourselves was to buy a wood stove. And today, Thursday, October 17th, 2024, is wood stove installation day. So before we get started on the installation, I wanted to show you a quick couple updates around the property. I'm standing just inside the south door off the driveway. And as anticipated, big changes have happened in here. So they've put in a big work table so that they could put in our hearth pad for the stove. So generally speaking, when you have a stove installed, the stove company does the hearth pad and the stove all together as a package. But James, our general contractor, uh, wanted to do the hearth pad and we said yes to that. So this is something that James has been working on over the last several days. It went in, I think, two days ago. And I don't really want to pull the cover off without him here to give his approval. But this is where we'll be working when they come because the stove is going to go right on it. So it's centered on this wall, which is what we wanted. Originally, we thought maybe it would have to be more uh, over here because we wanted them to use the existing vent hole, which is a little bit over this way. But if it gets too close to the edge, then it becomes a safety hazard, right? Because it's hot. So having it centered here is brilliant. And I'm curious to see how they're going to angle the pipe. I think they're going to have to angle the pipe up to go through the hole because that is that hole is not centered. The problem is that right above here is my office and centering the out pipe over the stove means that the pipe would be going directly through the door to my office from the upstairs landing, which clearly is not a good idea. So that we'll see what they do with that when they get here to install. This is the propane heater that they've been using. It's not on at the moment, but it was actually really helpful to have this in here because James was able to describe to us, this is an, I think he said an 80,000 BTU unit and things were quite toasty in here. And we were a little bit worried that we got in a stove that was over-engineered for the space, but our stove gives out around 34,000 BTU. And so that'll be a much more comfortable temperature because we want to be able to sit in this room and look at the stove and read. So that's very exciting. Other changes in here, I'm going to turn around and look into the great room. The great room has also changed quite a lot and you'll see there's a lot of stuff in here. So one of the things that's in here is a new breaker box, which they need for the electrics. This big, beautiful, as tall as me and as wide as me is, I believe it's the compressor for the mini split system, which is amazing. And then the rest of the mini split system bits are here, which I didn't realize they were going to be here so quickly. We only gave them the advance um, for the materials payments. I think it was last week is when that was released from the bank. So they came right very quickly. And then this purple thing over here is our new dishwasher. This is our new stove. That is our garbage disposal. And let me walk around here and I'll show you the front of the dishwasher. So nothing fancy, but these are the appliances that we bought on the pre-Labor Day sale. And Lowe's has been holding them for us all this time. And they said, basically, look, you know, you've got to pick these up eventually. And we said, okay, we'll come pick them up. And then the range hood, which is the last part of the set that we purchased, is in the kitchen. So let me take you through to the kitchen. I'm trying to figure out what the best way to walk around in here is. Uh, not that way. Let's go this way. So that is the range hood. And then behind it is the sheetrock that's going to go in the ceiling in here. So it's great to see that all in place. And then we do finally have an answer on the fridge. This is the fridge that was in the house when we bought it. It's a big fridge and it fits the space perfectly. And we were very much hoping that it would be functional. However, James ran a test on it and it's not functional. So the upside of it not being functional is that they can just cut it apart and, and junk it. We do have actually two fridge options. We have a fridge that our next door neighbor in Tulsa was giving away. He moved a, a month before we did. So we brought that from Tulsa. And then Peter's uh, friends in Ithaca have graciously offered their extra drinks fridge should we need it. And so we have a couple of options for getting a refrigerator in here. Ah, this is what I'm smelling. It smells like fresh paint in here. And I was trying to figure out why, because nothing has been painted, but it's the spackling on the joints that I'm smelling. Which, given the fact that this house smelled like old house <laughs> up until now, it's a noticeable change to smell fresh, fresh paint smells. Ah, so, so this, this is my office. 
and if we were to center it on the wall, that is the existing hole, which if you'll remember is off to the right of where we want the hearth pad. If it was centered, you'd have the pipe coming up here, which is the middle of the room and right when you get into the doorway. So that was not gonna happen. Here on the backyard, and it looks like we're having some settling around the new septic tank, which I'm assuming is normal, given how much earth was moved, but I'm a little bit curious because it's this is the obviously the most visible, but there's also a little bit going on over here, so I'm not sure if that's just the clay kind of clumping or cracking or if there's something we need to do here. I wanted to show you around. I noticed when we pulled up is that we have a new mailbox. Well, we have a new mail post, I guess is what you call that. We've had a number of problems getting mail service established here. The first one was because they weren't delivering here for a number of years, and so this had fallen off their route. And then when we did get back on their route, the old post that was here was too far back from the road and it couldn't be reached and things like that. So we had talked to James, our general contractor last week about this situation and asked if there was something he could do about it. And he described his solution. We said, okay, well, you know, when you get to it, when you get to it. So I didn't realize he had gotten to it until we got here, but not only do we have mail post here, but Peter said, oh, is there mail in it? And I said, well, I don't, I don't know. Let me check. And yes, in fact, there was mail in it, including Peter's New York state ID, which we have been waiting for for some time. This is Ithaca Stoveworks arriving. Hooray! So the folks are going to put in our stove for us. Yeah. That's what we like to see. There she is. Our new stove. There she is. She's beauty and she's grace. And here, before she gets unwrapped, is our seafoam stove. I don't know if you can see the color very well through the plastic. To be honest, I'm having a hard time seeing the color through the plastic. But I'm very excited to see this come together. And actually the hearth pad is both as big as I thought it would be and smaller than I thought it would be. I had envisioned maybe it coming out more into the room, but I think this will be lovely. That is the color of our brand new stove and it is gorgeous. So a couple of things while we have a break. James has been digging into the ceiling to figure out the wiring situation, and he just got done telling us he's amazed the house didn't burn down at some point before, because can you see how frayed that wire is? I mean, it's just ridiculous. And also, uh, James has been giving us kind of some electrical basics. You should have no more than two rooms on one circuit breaker, uh, but all four, four rooms. <laughs> We're on the one that's up here that runs through this box. So, which we knew, we knew they had done some shady things with the number of circuits in here. So that is not terribly surprising. Also though, um, and this is getting into the stove installation as well. Can you see that beam and that beam are not the same size. So that beam looks like it's hand hewn and Marshall, our stove installer thinks that that is probably the original beam that they used to construct the house because it's hand hewn. And then at some point he thinks they came through and they put in these reinforcing beams. But the problem is that they're, well, not the problem, but a thing is that these aren't centered uh, or evenly spaced, right? So like here, there's a lot more space between the newer beam and here there's a lot less space. The reason that matters is that you can see he's drawn on the ceiling here. This is where the 12 inch square, um, hole for the pipe needs to be and where that line is goes right through this beam so i'm none of us are thrilled with having to cut into the original beam but there's no other way to get the stove pipe up <laughs> through the floor because just to the left of this or right of this here is where the wall is of my my office upstairs so we can't go any more this way and we can't go too much further this way because then we'll be in the middle of the doorway to the office so 
what they're gonna do is they're gonna cut out most of the beam here. Marshall said he'll save me a chunk if he can. And then what we'll have to do is there'll be a steel gusset going in here, basically a steel plate that will go in here and reinforce the floor because the beam is no longer there. So that's where we're at at the moment. about the lighting in here. I'm not really quite sure what that is, the strobe lighting going on, but this is our brand new window. So it's been installed. So this orangey pink stuff is thicker foam, and then the yellow stuff here is meant for thinner spaces. So it's all installed and we're just waiting for it to dry. I wish I could stay all day and watch the stove install, but I have to head home to the Airbnb to do some work for a few hours. I'm gonna check in with the guys before I go, and then I'll turn you over to Peter Cam because he was able to stay for the afternoon. And don't worry, I'll be back for the grand finale at the end of the day. The stove here has been covered up, of course, to protect it during the installation. We've got the first box put in the ceiling where the stove pipe is going to come down. And the installation is underway. Here we are upstairs installing the upper pipe. Things have been set into the ceiling. We've got the insulated pipe already set towards the floor and they're getting ready to put in the top part into the sheathing there so they'll be ready to go to the roof. Final framing in of what used to be our door to nowhere as the door to nowhere is being sealed up from the inside and they're going to come around, lay in the insulation, seal it from the outside and put the siding on. As you can see, they are in the process of installing the brand new chimney for our wood stove there. It is mostly installed, although they're still putting on the flashing and various other smaller parts. I'm back! It's amazing how much was done in the time I was away, so let's take a look at where the install looks now and what other projects have been completed and then we'll have a debrief from our installers on how to use this fancy new stove that we just got. Oh my gosh you guys she is so pretty so the sun is coming in through the windows on the west side. This is our stove in situ. She's done, she's in, she's installed. This is her pipe going up and they haven't taken down the extension cord. I'm sure I'm gonna name her him, her, 
I'm sure I'm going to name her because she's gorgeous. And I want to be able to say things like, is it time to feed blank? Peter is very kind to put up with this idiosyncrasy. Can we call it an idiosyncrasy? Have it? <laughs> he didn't say it's adorable, but that's all right. I like to name things. It's a thing that I get from my mother, so I'm definitely going to want to name it. But isn't it she gorgeous? This is the most beautiful seafoam color. And I love how the difference she looks in the, when we were here in the morning without any natural light coming in, it looked a little bit more turquoisey, and now in the light it looks way more blue. Oh, awesome sauce. So Peter and I were trying to figure out where to put her, the implements because we need to put you know, an ash bucket and the indoor wood pile and the tools. So we have left or right, and we were sort of thinking over here because this is kind of wasted space in the sense that we don't want to do anything permanent there that would block uh, egress to the hallway, but I think it's one of those things that we're just going to have to try them in a couple different places and figure out what feels what feels right, because one can also make an argument, you know, for tucking the tools away back over here where you're less likely to see them when you first walk in. So the tools should be here in about two weeks, and then we can play around with how things should look. Big changes since the last time I was here, which was about mm, four and a half hours ago. The hole, 12 foot, sorry, the 12 inch square hole has been put through, through the beam and through the floor. This is the my office and it goes up. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see this on the phone, but it goes up through here and then you can kind of see the glint of it there. Let's see if it'll lighten up a little bit. And then it goes up and out, oops, there we go, out to the roof. So downstairs, which I'll show you in a minute, they put some black on it to make it fit in a little bit better, but that is more or less what I had envisioned and more or less where I had envisioned it. So now what James is going to do at some point is to uh, box it in. It's not going to be a, a burn hazard when it gets up to this floor, but it will still be hot to the touch. And it also doesn't look particularly aesthetically pleasing, especially with the rest of the decor of the room. So he's just gonna box it in. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if it might make sense to make a tiny little cupboard over here, since that's gonna be wasted space otherwise. So we'll ask James. We got really close to the line of the door here. We're about, so the line of the door is here. So we're, we're bored in a little bit through. And then here's the flooring that they took out earlier. One of the other things that's happened since I've been away is that they completed framing in the windows, so they trimmed back all the excess insulation. Keep going. And they uh, they framed in temporarily. They framed in the bottom part of the wall, so at least there's some protection from the outside. And this is the super sexy work of rewiring a house. <laughs> right? Hold up. Is that through? Yeah. That's all that matters. Gosh. Perfect. Auto waste it away. Okay. It's all kinds of gymnastics up there. So we just finished our briefing with the folks from the stove company. And we've got this nifty meter up here, which is super cool. And the only thing we need to remember, and I'm saying this as much to remind myself as you all, is because this is a double walled pipe, what reads on here is a third of the actual temperature inside the stove. So that's good to know. Our airflow is down here. We have an ash pan underneath. And then we have a side door as well. Now, technically speaking, you need to have 18 inches in front of each of your stove doors, and we don't have that here because we didn't realize that that was the case. So we either need to put a lock kit on this to follow code, or we need to extend the hearth. And we can either extend the hearth permanently by extending out what's already here, or there's something called the hearth pad extender, which is basically a mobile thing that you can put here, and it will make your pad bigger, so. Either one is an option.
Last change of the day, this is the concrete pad in its final finished end of day condition, and that is where the condenser for our mini split system is going to sit. So that feels pretty good. Pretty, pretty good to see that in situ. To say that Peter and I are massively excited about this wood stove would be an understatement. Everything else that we are putting on the property, we are putting there because it is necessary for the property to be functional. A new roof, the driveway, the septic system, the electrics, the bathroom, all of those are essential and required to get the certificate of occupancy and to be able to live in the house. The wood stove is a luxury. It's a luxury for two reasons. A, Peter and I both love wood stoves. I've never had one. Peter has not had one in quite some time. And B, we have intentions of being more sustainable on this property and also able to go off grid. And at the moment, wood is more sustainable in some ways than gas or electric. The Finger Lakes National Forest is five minutes down the road from the house and they've had an ash borer infestation so there's quite a lot of firewood currently available and so this is the first step in what will pr and, and probably the only step for quite some time in a long-range plan to be capable of going off-grid if we need to and also to have a heat source that is not reliant on electricity. So thank you for joining me today. I want to leave you with a shot of the property at sunset. One of the really cool things that we're able to do now that we live so close to the property is that we're able to stay at the property later in the day and the golden light coming in the hour before sunset this particular day was magical and I want to share it with you. So thanks so much for being here and I'll see you in the next video. So it is six o'clock, it's about an hour before sunset, and I love the way that this late afternoon light is coming through the trees. It is absolutely gorgeous. And especially now, because there's still green, but then there's hints of red with some of the vines turning color. And James told us that one of the nights recently that they were here until seven, uh, Mama Deer and her fawn came walking out of the woods over here and through and off that way. I just think this is so beautiful. Even this time of year when it's no longer quite the impenetrable jungle <laughs> that it was in high summer. It's just, it's just fabulous.